we're going to be looking at the circuit. And I have I wrote an article about four years ago on this subject.com. You have some on uh, a lot of materials. We published almost 300 articles in the last five years. Wow. wow. And this is one of them. I keep going back to the, this article. The title is A Call to Death. Mm -hmm. A Call to Death. And when you are called to Jesus, you need to die, to be crucified to flesh begin to live in the spirit. So I have just few copies. Um please uh, you can get us to show it. I have few copies I printed yesterday and if you want if you if you if you if you can lay your hands on a copy today you can visit vesselsofvirtues.com and then you can have access to that. Our call to service like like what we are doing we've been doing since last year. September with dynamics of kingdom of call to kingdom service. Dynamics of call to kingdom service. Things that we need to know as every member of the church is meant to be a worker, a servant, a disciple. Christ is not say in Matthew 28 verse 19 and 20, Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20 says, go into the world, make disciples, he said, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. He didn't say, make combat. <laughs> the Bible did not say, go into the world and build churches and pack the Fill, yeah. He didn't say, go and build mega churches. <laughs> Please, let's, let's look at, I'd like you to talk about, please, brother, please, can you help us project Matthew 28? Matthew 28. Matthew 28. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's even there. It's even there. God bless you. Let's just, therefore, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. It didn't say make disciples of black people or white people. All nations. Somebody asked me, um, Reverend, uh, is your church in the church? The church is not in the church. I was so small. It's a church of all nations. So, he said, disciples of all nations. He didn't say baptizing them. So, we have a mandate to go and make disciples. That means every child of God is meant to be a disciple. So, that's in the ideal system, an ideal world. There are so many Christians who do not want to be. By the time you get into the dynamics, the practicality of being a disciple, you will agree with me. One of the questions that came to me in one of my classes in the seminar is, are all Christians disciples? That's deep. Are all Christians disciples? In an ideal system, an ideal world, they should be or are. Because discipleship comes with a commission. It comes with a cross to carry. Yeah, yeah. You know what Christ said? Please, let's go to the next, next slide, please. I want to be as fast as possible so that we can finish this particular session today and then maybe talk, ask, you know, answer some, some questions. The second slide is no cross, no crown. There must be a cross to carry when you're disciple. Matthew 16, 24. Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So there must be a cross. If there's no cross, you're my disciple. There must be something. And cross, you know what it means. Only criminals were on the cross, the Roman, if you look at Roman history, criminals were the only ones who were killed during the Jesus So, carrying a cross means you must be an important. Paul said there's something here, even as powerful as hard working the apostle Paul is, there was something 
that was pinching in, that was painful. He said, God, take this away. Take this away. So, God said, no, my grace is sufficient for yeah. Are you a Christian with a cross if you're not wearing the Lord's Are you a Christian with a cross, carrying the cross, still smiling, mm-hmm. doing what you're meant to do in the house of God? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let me keep on. If you are two, two statements, let me try and bring them. I don't know. If you are a Christian without a cross, you're not yet a Christian. If you are a Christian, if you are a, if you are a disciple with a cross, that makes you a disciple, a valid one, a legal one. According to the Bible, a legal. But you are carrying your cross and you are squeezing your face. And you tell the pastor, Pastor, I can't do this because of this. Because of this cross, I cannot do it. You have to beat yourself. If I can't even come to church next month, all through next month, I can't be in church at all. Because of what? Because of this cross. Are you afraid to be He didn't say, carry your cross and sit at home. He didn't say, carry your cross and relax and have, and cross your leg and have tea or coffee at home. He didn't say carry your cross and be rude to the leaders of the church. You are meant to honor them. He didn't say carry your cross and squeeze your face. You can't smile, it's not even there. Dynamics, understand discipleship. I believe this is going to be an issue today because of the time. But we try and dig deep. God helping us even into the intro. So who is a disciple? Let's let's look at you know, a few things about who is a disciple is from the Greek word, Mathetes. Mathetes is, that is what a disciple is. And according to that dictionary, 1828 Noah Webster's Dictionary, a disciple is a follower. Look at, look at the parameters, look at the, the content. A follower, an ardent to the, to the Doctrine of another, the doctrines of another, ends is constant attendance of Jesus Christ. We are called disciples. Ends, yeah. all Christians are called disciples. In the ideal world, all Christians are meant to be carrying the cross and they are meant to be disciples and they are meant to follow and they are meant to be faithful Amen. in their service. This is called the kingdom service, the dynamics. Every Christian is making it is they go and carry many Christians in Preston. Go and disciple everybody. Yeah. Wow. wow. I was only pray for cross for people. They are not carrying there is no cross. <laughs> you should have to pray for cross. Wow. There must be a cross to carry. There must be something that will happen and you are still in the middle of it. You are still moving. You are still going. And look at all this. The Matthew 28, 18 to 20. 19 to 20, he talked about the service of all nations. Matthew 27, 25. Now, when the evening had come, there come a rich man from Arimathea named John Joseph, who himself, and also a disciple of Jesus, is a rich man, very rich, wealthy man. He is a Pharisee. He's a rich man, he is part of the leaders, the Jewish leaders, but he's a disciple. Acts 9, 26 talks about uh, another disciple, Dorcas, a disciple. These are not people that are following Christ everywhere. They are not part of the world. There are sets to it. Jesus Christ had one. Peter was very close to him. Listen to this. He had three. Peter, James, and John. Two sets. He had two out. All of them, but only twelve. They had seventy. They had one twenty. And when he was going, they left into the world as a church. Those were the ones that went into the cities. He said, they remain here, and something will happen to you. When the power comes, then you begin to go. Amen. So you can see that the old church Christ left, they were disciples. Yeah. They're worried and there wasn't anybody sitting down and then just coming to eat cake 
is it a man I'm going home. Everybody's meant to be on this race. Yeah. It's not a cake and biscuit matter that makes you disciple. He must. Yes. It is. Yes. And that that's not it. There must be something you need to do. And I want to go a bit into history. Bible history. There are three different ages when it comes when it comes to the way people accept the biblical truth. Three different ages. We have the pre-modern age. The pre-modern age, there wasn't anything, they don't accept anything about it. I mean they are the they they are the high level of acceptance of the Bible scriptures. They believe everything in the Bible. They accept it. That's the pre-modern age. Bible was the highest authority there. And everybody, when, when it comes to the scripture, people will say yes, they believe. After the pre-modern, we have the modern age. It was a time of science, it was a time of technology, and you have to prove to try to convince people to believe. It's not as if they do not believe, but you need to go extra there to be able to make them to believe. But now, we are in the post-modern era. And you hurry, there is no understanding at all. People don't, you talk about, they just look at you and say, what are you talking about? We are in an age where you talk about the scripture and someone is asking what is it about? What are you talking about? <clears throat> and it's a time of bias. One word. People now depend on their own view. In the other they call it liberalism. People just hear, liberal, it is what I feel is right. What the pastor says is his opinion. <laughs> and they tell you the Bible is just written by somebody. And you want to impose your opinion. I say, it's Ayo's opinion. So what is Ayo's opinion? <laughs> <laughs> so now, it is, it is now we are in a very terrible time. We are getting to the time. Yeah. We are not there yet. <laughs> but the reality is the bias is so high. That level, the threshold is so high now. Everyone's opinion and perspective is perfect, perfect for their own life, for their families. And if you are not in their shoes, that's one of the most important If you are not in their shoes, if you are going to explain what they explain, so you tell them that this is this is you tell you, I think you don't even have to understand it. Even if you have read, even if you have you have prayed, God has given you the revelation, they said, No, you have not been there. You have to have experienced it. Before you say it, <clears throat> the brand is a very difficult age. But the church, when we say we're in the church, we should be flexible in the spirit and be, and be very ready, keen on having revelation for the Almighty God. I pray as a church, <clears throat> we grow into more revelations of His word in the name of Jesus. I want to talk about a few things that we need to learn, to know, when we come, when we're talking about disciples, understand the discipleship. And as much as uh, God will help us, we look into persistence is very key. Persistence is very key. Very key. You can't do it for five minutes and not anymore. <clears throat> you can't get into church for five minutes and you want to come and you can't get into the church five seconds and you want to be a leader. If it's, go and look, it's written all over New Testament. You can't get someone who is inexperienced into leadership in church. It is not my own idea, it is a biblical idea. It is a biblical, that, that is a fact. You can't elevate, you can't promote someone in no combat. That does not, it's not, that is, is here. It's not what is ideal, and we have to lead the spirit towards the spirit for leading as well. Sacrifice is there. It's not about pers persistence, you have to keep doing it. It's talking about sacrifice. Sacrifice is key. Whether it's convenient or not. I think second Timothy. When it's convenient or not, you have to keep being there. 
doing what you've been commissioned to do within the house of God, within your ministry, we have to keep doing it. It doesn't matter if the time is convenient. It doesn't matter if what you are going through is a perfect situation or not. Um, last year, 2021, was a year, a very, very memorable year that I won't forget in my life and my ministry. February 4th, <coughs> yesterday, made it a year that my father went to be with And I had not seen him for five years, for some reason, before that. We were just talking about him, complete gentleman, and no to me. Now, I don't know what is. Is to glorify himself. Yes. I don't know what you're going through now. Whatever you're going through now, I don't know how tough it is. It is. That changed the whole situation. She's not been to church for 26 years and she came and had my own testimony. What, what, what happened to me? Just 72 hours ago. So I don't know what you're being, what you're going through now. I believe. All you need is to just be at the cross. Go back to the same place and seek his grace. Because the second place in my grace is sufficient. 
Nossa viemos. Nós se viemos. E nem a se fazer de sair. Nós se viemos e nem a se de sair. E nós íbamos e nós íbamos para trás. Lenin, eu sei que você está de novo. Eu falo que você está de novo. A disciple is a learner. For you to learn, you must be able to write next to the exams. Getting paid for exam is tough. Having to do thesis over and over again, writing, you don't have to. You can't write from a blank head. That means you need to get something here and begin to write. That's perseverance. We must be willing, we must put on our thinking plan. Willing to learn and to read and to study, not only read, to study. Study to show yourself approved. Or to don't need it. Study to show yourself approved. And no more thing, fellowship. Fellowship with God and believer. It is not optional. Come to church. Don't miss it. You know what? I tell people, when one person comes into this room in a very winter, cold winter morning February, the 15th of February is cold. One person stays here for five minutes, let him go out, and let 20 people get out this place and spend some five minutes. How much can I tell you? I'm here. It's still very cold. One person. There are 20 people in the world. That is starting to be the most serious. We love the results. That is, that is a simple illustration, analysis of fellowship. You shouldn't wait till Pastor Lizzie says, please come. You have to come. It's good to be in the presence of God. It is good for your heart. Is it good for your soul? It is good for your spirit. Who says, who says, leaders don't have a mental head? Everybody has it. You know the difference? I wrote, I did a research on that. And the, the, the finding is in this book. Everyone has psychological problems. Everybody has everybody. There's no one that doesn't have it. Once we are living in this cosmos, we're living in this world. We have it. Everybody has it. But the way we deal with this is different. The difference is the way I deal with it. The way you deal with it. What we say about you. The way you see yourself and the way God sees you is a different. A disciple, you don't mind, you don't mind, you don't care what somebody feels. Once you are in tune with the story. And the way to get that is fellowship. Warmth. Paul says, I think Paul says in Romans, he said, we should not we shouldn't forsake the fellowship of believers. Paul wrote to the, to the, to the Romans, he wrote. He wrote that to them. And uh, by going to the difference between intelligent quotient and adversity quotient, the young professor, Professor Angela Dockwood, did a research in Harvard. I read about that research and I was moved. She was able to do a research within a setting, a three setting. One, a military academy, Second, very challenging schools, it brought the teachers together, and then the world spelling students, world spelling students. She did her research, and the question is, the thesis question was, why do successful people succeed? Why are people fruitful? Why do they succeed? Perseverance, not that alone. And this, this, this lady defines, defines, defines grit as passion and sustained perseverance. We are not looking at just church setting here. I believe I'm speaking with people who really want to be successful in their career, in their ministry, in their business, and this principle works for us as Christians and for whatever you want to do. You have ministry. I was having a chat with my brother. He's got a ministry on YouTube. This is a very valid principle that will help you grow in your ministry. Passion. One. Passion.
Passion is one, not enough. But you need sustained persistence. Persistence is sustained. You keep moving. Regardless of the obstacles and hindrance, you are moving as a disciple. You are moving as a business person. As a ministry leader, you are moving regardless of what is happening. So many people have been stopped by the pandemic. Ministries have been closed down mm. during the pandemic years. Mm. We're talking about success. Somebody said, are you always talking about success? Uh, persistence and consistency. That's, that's it. Mm. You are not giving up. You're not giving up because it's raining. Mm. It's raining, the winter is, is, is cold. And then you can't do something because of the weather. We are not controlled by what we see. We are controlled by the drive inside of us. So there must be a drive. Even when there are no particular concerns, concern for reward or recognition, you are not rewarded, you are not, you are not, nobody is seeing you, but you are still doing that. It looks, people are not seeing you, but you are still doing it. But mind you, who are watching. When we came into Lancaster, um, about four, four and a half years ago, we were already doing, Vest of Virtues was active. And we are just doing our thing. We never knew that people were watching. The community is watching. And one day I got a call from one of the biggest charity organizations. I said, Ayo, please, are you able to help us? To do what? To promote our charity is a Christian charity organization because we see that Vest of Virtues, the what we are doing for Vest of Virtues, can we do it for us? I said, people are watching. Because we are not giving up. Because I'm not a man that will do something for five days and say no. But in this generation, people get tired. Mm -hmm. I've worked with missions, with people, vision projects, and they will do it and give them assignment. I, I don't know if it's happened to you, Pastor Billy. I have seen men. You give them a responsibility and they begin to act as a phone that drops inside water. Mm -hmm. The day you elevate them and say, This is, I'm adding senior to your editor, and then you have this responsibility. <laughs> and they say, Are you, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> Because of challenges, because of the challenges, but his grace is able to give us capacity. Amen. Resilience is another word. Resilience. Please look at these words. Ambition, self-control. That is these ones we can't trust all these ones today. Because these are big ones. But for you to be able to attain that, so it is not. The IQ now is adversity, adversity portion. Mm How -hmm. you are able to face adversity? Yeah. Please give me the next slide. It's adversity portion. It's not intelligent. You are intelligent. You might have passion, but when you when you don't have sustained persistence, you will fail. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to do out with how smart you are. It is how rugged you are on the field. Mm -hmm. It's a disciple. Mm -hmm. Passion plus this brings success. In this is a principle. It does not work. It's not a church principle. It is a general life principle that affects everything. Wow. So let's begin to use this. Let's begin to use this and move forward. I should be rounding off now and I want to close so that we can entertain questions. I don't want to shoot it uh, be, um, be beyond the time. We, we, we have a couple in our ministry they've been part of us for about a year and a half. Big, big support. Financially support, su supportive. Moral, morally supportive. Spiritually, they pray with us. They do all sorts. We are, you know, each time I think about them, I thank God for them. Just like Paul. I thank God for you. I'm grateful to God for you. And the husband called me and he said, Are you, are you really sure that uh, people are reading all that? He said, can you, ex can you explain more? He said, All these things that we are posting, how are you able to trust it? And every year I give a report of the tracking we do behind the messageofvetures.com. It's a big website, but we see traffic. On the average, we see 800, 1,000 visits every week. And God is good. We're having feedback, but I see that every 24 hours. 
but not everybody sees it. But they just worry and see if we are reaching out. I tried to prove to him that this, this, and that, you know, screenshot a couple of, you know, um, statistics behind the office, and I sent to him, and he said, okay, thank you. That thank you, and he's like, but well, you know what happened? He came and shared the testimony in our last meeting. Probably you were there. Because we usually have monthly meeting, fellowship meeting with all the members of the churches globally. And he said, something happened. They took up a project with Compassion UK. You know, they, they sponsor children from poverty, um, stricken countries and families and all that in Africa. And 18 years ago, they picked a boy and they began to help. But they just picked that boy, they met him and that was it. The boy wrote them a letter. Just two weeks after, he came and asked me that question. And where did he find them? He found them on Messages of Virtues. They've not had contact for 18 years. And God proved to him that he's doing his work. And I want to pray for the prayer experience team. Please 